All right, good afternoon, everyone. Mike here with the National Weather Service office in Cleveland, located here at the Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. And we're outside today because it is a beautiful day here in the land. Had a little uh, technical difficulties with the last live video, so we're going to redo this real quickly. But uh, again, we're, today is Skywarn Recognition Day 2019. This is a very important and annual event that everyone does with the National Weather Service offices across the country. And we're going to talk more about this as we go inside this vehicle and talk with one of the licensed ham operators this afternoon, see what they've been doing all day and what they hope to achieve out of this. But uh, anyway, so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, type them on here and we'll answer a few of those questions here at the end of this little broadcast but again uh, we thought we'd take things out here and uh, talk to the nice folks that came out and did this today again this day is amazing I I this is a rare treat to get this type of nice weather here in December 40 degrees no wind and sunshine it's a two thumbs up for the weather guys okay so we're gonna go in this vehicle this is a special vehicle this is a uh, event support vehicle and let me flip this around here and I'll show you what this looks like this is a mobile vehicle that they could take out and and when a disaster strikes and help with communication so let's go in here and talk to evan all right let's get, flip that back around here and again evan is a, a licensed ham operator so um how long have you done this um i've, I've been licensed about uh, two years now uh, my call signs uh ke8idh and uh i've actually kind of got interested in ham rated with skywarn and always been uh interested in it and uh like for the whole for the event that we're having today with uh, Skyrim Recognition Day, it's 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 really neat to be able to like uh, show about all the volunteers that help out with Skyrim and everything in the communities that uh, everything with weather that all the guys that are on the ground actually seeing what's there, reporting it to the weather stations and stuff. It's uh it's a lot of fun and it's fun to be able to help out with the weather and stuff. And Evan's been doing it for two years now. You've been licensed two years, and we have this fellow right here. You said hi. hi. What's your name again? I'm Eric in ADUC. <laughs> How long have you done this? Well, I've been a licensed hand for 41 years, and I've been a Skywarn spotter since 1979. Good job. I th th I thank you for doing that. I predate your Doppler radar. <laughs> you, you, you predate me, actually. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember your, your, your boss's predecessors, predecessors, predecessors. We go back to the days of Marvin Miller. Wow. Impressive. And you've probably seen a lot of change. I mean, you, um, all the changes that have come over the decades that you've been doing this. Well, you know, there, there have been a lot of changes, but there's a couple things that have always stayed the same, okay? You guys sit here, you've got great, great setup, phenomenal expertise at the weather offices, but as you get a distance from the Doppler radar, there's a certain altitude you can't see below, mm -hmm. okay? What we do, you train us, you guys, I've been to spotter training every year since 1979. And I always learn something new every time because there's always something that's different. But we provide the ground truth to verify what you guys are seeing on the radar. Because, like, for instance, you guys cover out towards Toledo. With a takeoff angle on the antenna, you can't see below 18,000 feet by the time you get 100 miles out. That is correct. The radar does have limitations, and that's when you guys are able to right. fill in those gaps that technology right. doesn't and, allow and us to see. And the fact that you guys train us in what to look for you know that if one of one of our trained spotters says hey this is what i'm seeing you know that that guy in the ground knows what he's talking because you taught him you taught him so evan tell me what you've been doing i'm gonna flip the camera around here and tell me oh hey eric thanks for joining us here live on facebook live so what are you doing right here on on your computer um we're actually uh we're making contacts uh it's a with the event a two-day event here and uh, we're actually up to 141 contacts here that's actually the log and uh, yes, the log here with logging all the contacts with their call sign and uh, where they're located at here. And we actually just actually, uh, the goal is to talk to a lot of the different uh, National Weather Services. And I uh, actually just talked to one here from uh, Lincoln, Illinois. So it's, it's just really neat to be able to talk to all the different guys that are doing the same thing. And so um, flip this back around. So what, uh, so is that the furthest you've uh, been able to talk to today or? or? Oh, I, there's lots of different, like uh, for example here, uh, North Carolina, uh, some more, eastern states like New Jersey and New York and Pennsylvania and basically just all over the United States. And uh, and I guess like solar things that are going on or atmospheric things uh, with uh, space weather can can sometimes interfere with the radio waves uh, and, and, and depending or, on how or, far or, or how or short. Helps. Or helps. It, it, that's it, right. It's, uh, where we are, because right now we're at the bottom of the 11 year sunspot cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, the sun is extremely quiet. There's still enough ultraviolet radiant and high energy particles from the sun to light up the ionosphere. 
but the fact that our antenna orientation also has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. The way our antenna is set up because of its proximity to the ground instead of being up on a 100 foot tower, which <laughs> they frown upon when you're at an airport. Something about airplanes, you know. But uh, because our antenna is alone up to the ground, the propagation mode that's in play here is called NVIS, Near Vertical Incident Skywave. Uh, that provides you reliable coverage out to about five, eight hundred miles. Wow. Okay. And I've 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 done these before in Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. I worked at the weather mm -hmm. office in Springfield, Missouri, and also yeah. uh, Lake Charles in Louisiana. Right. And, and we, when we had you guys come out, uh, the local chapter down there, um, they were able to get as far away as Alaska. Or, you know, across, I mean, in certain conditions, it depends, is very rare. Depends on what band you're on as well. We're currently operating on forty meters. Mm -hmm. The intention is to cover that five to eight hundred mile uh, radius. Yep. That's where the bulk of the population in the U.S. is. Most of us, face it, most of the people are east of the Mississippi. Yes. And, I mean, talking to east nowhere is great, but there's nobody there. Yes. You want to talk where the people are. Yeah. So being on the forty meter band like we are with the NVIS type antenna set up. Uh, anybody east of the Mississippi, we can probably talk to. And, 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 and like radar waves, the radar that we use for weather radar, you know, there's certain atmospheric conditions that can bounce the radar or, or radio waves up and down off the atmosphere very weirdly, and it just depends on what type of situation is going on. The effect of the atmosphere is highly frequency dependent. Your radar operates in the microwave ranges at several gigahertz. We're down in the, in the short wave bands at seven megahertz. Uh, we actually rely on those features to provide long distance propagation. Yep. When you're trying to get reliable weather observations with a divine radius, those reflections and propagation enhancements don't always help you. Yep. So let's see, Todd uh, said, Sheffer uh, said, uh, make contact with them about uh, 1713 UTC today. Sweet. Yeah, D E N 3 P K J. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for saying that. Um, so, again, um, glad you guys could come out here. We, we, I mean, hey, we ordered up some really amazing weather. and um, Cleveland, and, December, uh, and sunny. Hey, we'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. Hey, no, nice job, no, guys. no wind, no cold, no, no snow. I wanna, can we put in an order in advance for good weather? <laughs> yes, uh, well, I wish we were, it was that easy. But, uh, but yeah, um, we appreciate you guys being out here, and thanks for doing this. And uh, we just wanted to show the public and our followers out there just a little bit what you guys do, because it is a very important important and valuable tool when it comes to communicating. And, and most importantly, anybody that's out there watching this, you can do this too. It's not that hard to become a ham radio operator. And once you get involved with that, hook up with your local Skyrim group, and then the fun really starts. And what what uh, website or maybe contact, uh, if, there, well, if someone is out there that's interested it's, in... It's and, gonna, it's gonna, and it's good for all ages. I mean, you know what I'm saying, like generations. It's I, not, I have seen people pass their license, their amateur radio license at the age of five. five. So five-year-olds have done this. Uh, if you can fog a mirror, there's really not much excuse for you to not do this. It's a, a lot of fun. Always new stuff to play with. Um, it, it's it's amazing. I know where the technology has gone since I've been licensed. It, it's really, it's cool. And then you get to help out guys like this. And that's, you want some self-satisfaction? Do that. It's good service. It, it certainly is. Well, thank you for coming out. Thank you, you Evan, for uh, letting us. Thanks, us. thanks for having us. All right, well, all right, yeah, guys, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to uh, put them on here, and we'll answer them throughout the day on social media. But again, thanks for joining us for on this Facebook Live here, and I'll do a real quick panorama because I love these of the beautiful, beautiful day. Giving the Doppler over there a little bit of a break today. It's on very, very slow, clear, uh, clear weather mode today. Beautiful day here at the airport. All right, everyone have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye.